Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting this basket filled with cozy items and let's begin by sketching it out. I'm going to start by drawing out the basket. I'm drawing this a little bit to the left because on the right hand side I'm going to place some books and in terms of the shape you can do a cylinder basket or any other shape but for mine I'm just going to keep it simple and create this rounded looking cube and on either side I'm going to add circles as the handles. As for the items, I want to add a blanket on the side that's just draping over the basket. So here I'm just trying to figure out the folds and how to make the blanket kind of thick instead of a thin material. I'm also going to add a couple of pillows as well as smaller rolled up blankets in front of these pillows. It's completely up to you though what you want to include in the basket. I personally didn't plan this when I was sketching it out, I kind of just thought about the elements that I found would be cozy to be included in this composition so you can also do the same. Since there's still a bit of space on the right I decided to add a couple of balls of yarn. To make the composition look less stiff, I decided to add a pile of books on the bottom right hand side and to add to the autumn theme, I'm also going to add a couple of small pumpkins. To draw out the pumpkins, I find that it's much easier to draw the silhouette or the outer portion of the pumpkins before adding on the details. This way we've already established the shape as well as the size of the pumpkins and it's much easier to draw out the details like the ribs as well as the stem. Considering the composition feels a little bit too low and I've already drawn out the details, I tried to compensate the height by adding some firewood at the back and I'm just going to draw out some cylinders in different heights and I try to make the edges look a little bit rugged and uneven. I also want to add some evergreen leaves but I'm just going to indicate the spacing by drawing out the main stems of the leaves. And that's it for the sketch, next I'm going to go through the colors. Queen Red by Daniel Smith, New Gambush by Daniel Smith, Cherry Verde by Holbein, Sepia by Holbein, Queen Sienna by Daniel Smith, Yellow Ochre by Holbein, and Indigo by Schmincke. Firstly, I'm going to start with a background with a really light consistency of yellow ochre and sepia. I added a lot of water to this so the color is very light and I'm just going to spread this across the left side of the composition where there's a lot of space. Near some of the items, I added more sepia in the mix and I just dot it in while the surface is still damp. Next, I want to indicate the space for the evergreens. For this, I used a mix of cherry verde with yellow ochre first, and I just painted short dashed lines, which are slightly directed outwards on either side of the stems. This doesn't have to be neat, I just want this texture to suggest the evergreen leaves. When I'm using this first color mixture, I want to leave out a bit of space since I want to vary the colors, so I don't want to overwork it at the beginning. After I've painted some leaves, I'm going to then add more terra verde in the mixture to create a slightly darker value. And I'm going to paint in between the leaves that I've already painted. I didn't really wait for any parts to dry so the colors can mingle with each other. This will be served as the base color and because the surface is quite wet, I'm going to move on to the evergreen leaves at the bottom. I'm going to paint it the exact same way by using the mix with a little bit of yellow ochre then switching it around with the mixture which has more terra verde in the ratio while the surface is still wet until I create something similar to the first evergreen leaves. Once I'm done, I'm also going to leave this to dry and move on to paint the base color for the next item which is going to be the firewood. For this, I use a really light consistency mix of yellow ochre and sepia. Then while the surface is still a bit damp, I added more sepia in the mixture for a darker color and I tried to start adding the pattern for the skin of the trunk. 
I want most of the light source to come from the left hand side which is why I painted the darker color on the right side of the tree trunk and for the ones behind I just painted over the whole surface using the darker mixture. Next I'm going to paint the base color of the basket. I used a mix of yellow ochre, a little bit of quinciana and sepia. For this mixture, I added a bit more sepia so the color is darker since the light is coming from the left. I want the other side to be lighter. So I'm just using a thin consistency here to paint the base color. As for the left side, I added more yellow ochre for a slightly lighter value. After that, I'm actually going to use the same mixture as this side on the right hand side since I feel like I can darken the value further and also increase the saturation so I'm just glazing it over. For the base color of the first pumpkin, I use a mix of yellow ochre and quinciana to create this light orange color. And for the stem, I use the previous basket mixture but with more sepia in the mix. For the pillow, I'm first going to use a really light consistency of indigo. This is mixed with a little bit of sepia which is why the color is quite muted. I kind of regretted this though. I think. By the end of it, the color wasn't as saturated as I want it to be, so I would recommend for you to just use indigo instead, so at least there's a little bit of saturation compared to the other muted colors. I'm also going to use the same color mixture for the blanket. As for the darker values, I just added a bit more sepia and also a slightly thicker consistency. For the second pillow, I want the color to be a creamy color, so I use the same mixture as the firewood which is from sepia and a bit of yellow ochre in a very light consistency. As for the darker value near the bottom part of the pillow, I just added more sepia. Next, I'm going to paint the base color for the rest of the items. For the first yarn, I use a mix of New Gamboge and Quinn Red in a very light consistency. Then for the first rolled up blanket, I used a yellow mix that I already had on my palette from New Gamboge with a bit of sepia. For the next yarn, I just used the same green that I already had on my palette that I used to paint for the evergreen leaves. As for the last blanket, I used a mix of indigo with a bit of sepia to create this grayish color in a very thin consistency so it almost looks white. Next, I'm going to paint the book covers. I added sepia to the New Gamboge that I already had on my palette and I'm using a medium consistency. Don't forget to also paint in the bottom part of the spine as well as the other side of the book cover. As for the next book, I used a medium consistency of indigo. As for the last book cover, I'm going to use a reddish brown mix. So I just added sepia into the peachy color that I used to paint the yarn. I want the last pumpkin to be white and I haven't decided yet what tone of white I want it to be so I'm just going to paint the cast shadows for now in a very thin consistency. I just added a bit of Quinn Red into the indigo and sepia mix that I already had on my palette in a very thin consistency and I'm just going to spread it out lightly. Then closer to the items, I added a little bit more sepia so those areas are a bit darker. For the sides of the blanket, I'm just going to use the same color as the blanket and paint on lines. Then I'm also going to add a bit of shadows using the same color but in a thicker consistency and a bit more sepia in the mix for the inner part of the blanket as well as the sides. I want to also start adding a little bit of details to the rest of the item so I just used the same color as the base but in a thicker consistency by adding on lines for the folds of the rolled up blanket as well as the texture of the yarn balls. For the pinkish yarn ball, I decided to add a little bit of the browns that I already had on my palette to darken parts of it, especially on the right hand side since this area will be in shadow. Next, I'm going to paint the darker greens for the evergreen leaves. I just used the browns and the greens that I already had on my palette with added sepia and terra verde. I'm placing the darker greens where the evergreens are slightly covered by the yarn balls 
and it's inside of the basket and towards the tips of the leaves I only added a little bit of this so there's a gradual change in the values from dark to light. Next I'm going to increase the value for the right hand side of the basket so I just use a bit of sepia and yellow ochre. I'm using a slightly thicker consistency than the base color now and I'm going to use a thinner consistency for the left side of the basket. On the size of the pillow, I decided to add a bit more shadow using the indigo and sepia mix. But as I'm editing and voiceovering this, I realized that I shouldn't have actually added those shadows because it made the painting a bit too heavy. And the light's supposed to be coming from that side anyway, so there shouldn't be too much shadows in that area. I think this is one of the paintings that I'm going to overwork again so I just want to let you guys know before I make certain mistakes so you can adjust this for your own paintings. Next I'm going to work on the pumpkins. I used a mix of new gamboge and quin red to create a brighter orange color and I'm going to darken the right hand side while painting on the ribs as well. For a slightly darker value, I took some of the brown there they had on my palette and added it to the bright orange color to help separate the sections of the pumpkin. For the white pumpkin, I ended up using the same color for the wood which is from yellow ochre and sepia in a very light consistency. And while I wait for the base color of the pumpkin to dry, I'm going to move on to paint the details of the wood. I used the same mix with more sepia in the ratio and I just placed on the shadows for now. For the darker values of all the items, I basically just either added indigo and sepia or just sepia into the mixture of the base color. And I also used a thicker consistency like for the folds of the rolled up blankets and the rest of the other items. So from here, I'm just going to keep adding on details using the same method as before. But each time I layer on the darker values, I always try to leave the base color or the previous color that I just painted for the items. So the previous color serves as the the lighter parts of the items and the darker values or the new layers are more of the details and the shadows. I want to also separate the sides of the book so on the right hand side I use a really thin consistency mix of indigo and sepia so it looks like a grey color and I'm also going to darken parts of the book covers by layering the same base color as before. Here I'm mixing sepia with quin red and a bit of new gamboge and I'm going to paint the texture or the pattern of the firewood. I'm starting with a really light consistency and I'm just painting on dashed lines following the curvature of each of those cylinders using my tiny brush so the textures are very subtle because this is going to be the base of the darker textures. After that, I switch to my large brush again, use the same color to add on a bit of shadows. Then I added indigo into the previous mixture, switch to my smaller brush again to add larger but less details using this darker mix. I feel like I've added enough textures here so I'm going to move on to the design of the pillows. I just added more indigo into the previous mix so it's a bit more blue and I'm using my small brush here to add some line details. Using a slightly thicker consistency, I'm also going to add a bit of detailing to the corner of this pillow. For the next pillow, I'm going to use a little bit of sepia in a thin consistency and using a dry brush load, I just added some dry brush textures to make this look like a natural fabric. Then I'm going to leave that to dry and add on other details on the blanket as well as the basket. 
I feel like I have enough details for now for the painting so I'm going to add on some outlines using my sepia colored pen and I'm just going to add outlines to where I feel it needs the extra redefinition along the edges. I'm also going to add a bit of texture for the sides of the book using my pen by drawing really thin lines. After adding on the outlines, I decided to add some textures by painting it again using the same brown color that I already have on my palette here. Around the handle of the basket, I wanted the dashed lines to face or be directed outwards. And as I get towards the bottom, I want the dashed lines to be directed horizontally according to the angle of the basket. I'm going to treat the left side the exact same way by just following the angle of the basket and painting on dashed lines in a very thin consistency this time so the value is much lighter. And here I'm just going over to neaten parts of those textures again on the right hand side. Here I decided to add a bit more cast shadow using the same purple color before but with added sepia to make the value darker. And I'm also going to extend the composition by adding a base to the whole painting and also a bit more of the background. I still feel like the left side of the composition looks too empty so I decided to add some branches with some dried up leaves using sepia as the branches and the brown mixture that I already have on my palette for the dried leaves. This is where I overwork the composition. I feel like I like the branches added next to the firewood but not on this area here. I just felt like it overwhelms the overall composition. At this point it was too late so I just keep on adding on the leaves and things like that but this is something that I want you guys to be mindful of for your own paintings so you can be more aware of the decisions that you're making for your own composition. Since the branches look too light here, I ended up just going over it with my pen. Then I'm also going to add some final touch-ups like extra shadows for the pumpkins, cast shadow, and also enhancing the textures and things like that. Since this whole composition is painted in a loose way, I decided to add some splatters to make the background a bit more dynamic. I'm only going to add a bit though because there's already a lot going on. Here I decided to enhance the darker values of the texture so I'm just going over certain areas again. After darkening the textures for the basket, I felt like the rest of the composition needs to be a bit more saturated so I ended up glazing some of the brighter colors for the background and some of the items. Since my palette was too dirty and all the colors are muted, I decided to switch to the other side of my palette or you can also clean your palette so the colors that you're activating can be a bit cleaner. I'm trying to look at the items with different hues. Here I'm just glazing over a bit of indigo and for the pumpkins I'm using a mix of New Gamboge, Quin Sienna and Quin Red. As for the yarns I'm going to add a bit of Quin Red to the browns that I already have on my palette and here I'm repainting the design of the pillow using more indigo in a medium consistency since parts of the design already faded after I added on the glaze. For the second pillow, I ended up using the reddish brown mix and I just paint on lines for the design. I 
I feel like the yellow ochre in the background is a bit too dead, especially when it's closer to the evergreens. So I want to introduce more of an orangey tone by adding quinciana into the yellow ochre. This way, there's a bit more contrast between those two colors. For some extra finalization, I decided to extend parts of the background and the base to make it a bit darker and also a bit more saturated. Then I also decided to outline the detail along the sides of the blanket. And lastly, I'm going to darken the cast shadows closest to those items. And that's pretty much it for this painting. Though this is not my favorite painting, I still enjoyed the process, so I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!